Hi guys, welcome back to the next episode of What's Studios. Today we're looking at Michael Lombardo. So let's get into it. Well, welcome back to the next episode of um, What's Studios. We're looking at the What's Studios today. Look at Michael Lombardo. And before you do that, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell on your Instagram. So yeah, Michael Lombardo. So let's get into it. Let's get into the background. Um, this is from uh, Wikipedia. Um, so when people think of um. Um, YouTube musicians that became criminals, people automatically think of Austin Jones. Well, um, let me tell you about another YouTuber who technically was a musician on YouTube and um, he was, um, he became a criminal. Um, so, um, Michael Lombardo, born March 30th, 1988, is an American former piano rock musician. He was known for writing piano driven rock songs and posting on YouTube under the username. Mike Lombardo music until his 2013 conviction on child pornography charges. He was previously signed to BDF TBA Records, through which he was released on LP, um, Songs for the Day, and one EP, Al Algamist. Lombardo posted music videos, songs, tutorials, and personal updates on his YouTube channel, which had over 20,000 subscribers for his closure. Um, as, of as of August 16, 2018, Lombardo was released from FCI Fort. Dix serving, having having served a five year sentence at a facility after pleading guilty to child pornography charges. Um, I don't think I think his YouTube channel has been terminated. Um, so, um, yeah. So, um, so what went wrong? I have a video by Savix. I know I'm showing Savix a lot, but I don't really know much about Mark Lombardo. And I think he goes in more detail, so let's get Savix. Um, so you can subscribe to his channel. It turns out Austin Jones was not the first musical YouTuber to use his fame to take advantage of his young female fan base. Mike Lombardo was an American musician and YouTuber who made his name on the site uploading piano-based rock songs that he'd written himself. He'd also occasionally post tutorials, personal updates, and even music videos. Having gained a name for himself in the fairly early days of YouTube, he caught the attention of DTBA Records, and through them, he released his first studio album, Songs for a New Day, in 2010. He would continue recording over the next year, including a live album he recorded at a copy shop in Philadelphia. As you can probably guess, Mike was not as big of a star as Austin Jones, and he never toured extensively, rarely played to large crowds, and also didn't get invited to Warp Tour like Austin. His channel also wasn't what you'd call big at 20,000 subscribers. While that's certainly not a small number, he wasn't a big name on YouTube as a whole. Nevertheless, he still had a dedicated fan base, mostly made up of teenage girls. And it's obviously here that we come to his downfall. In December 2011, the FBI raided Mike's home after they had received word from a University of Boston student that Mike, who at that point was 23 years old, had arranged a New Year's Eve meeting with a 15-year-old girl who was planning to travel from her Indiana home to meet him. When the FBI interviewed the girl in question, she told them that she and Mike had exchanged photos with each other, and upon searching her phone, they found numerous nude photos of him. Other teenage girls came forward with information on their interactions with Mike, with one of them saying he had performed an obscene act over webcam and tried to get her to do the same. FBI agents seized four computers, Mike's cell phone, a Motorola tablet, and a variety of hard drives and other storage devices from his home. He was held in police custody for five days before being released. In July 2012, the authorities would return, and Mike was arrested on 11 charges of soliciting CP. Mike's defense was saying that his victims happily obliged when he asked them for images, as if that made things better. He also claimed that the reason he did what he did is because he had no friends and so depended on online friendships. An online conversation between Mike and a 16-year-old girl from 2010 showed him telling her to delete the chat logs, saying, quote, that's like five years in federal prison and sex offender registration, showing he was fully aware that he was breaking the law. Prosecution was pushing for him to spend a maximum of 20 years behind bars. This was reduced to five years after a plea bargain with the FBI that stated he had to hand over all of his computers as well as his phone. Mike began his sentence in 2014 and was released four years later in 2018. Since his release, Mike Lombardo has disappeared from the spotlight 
having no online presence at all, presumably because his parole probably prohibits him from owning a computer. The majority of his fans will have most likely moved on and forgotten about him now. These days, Mike Lombardo is a relic of YouTube's past, and considering what he did, it's best that he stays there. I probably think where is he now? Um, no, he, he pretty much disappeared from the and I think the reason why is because I think his parole told him he couldn't use the internet, he couldn't use um, any phone or internet access, and he couldn't own a computer. So, so I think it's pretty clear that Mike Lombardo has disappeared. Um, my like my. Mike Combardo is one of the musicians on YouTube that pretty much became criminals. Um, but he was he was nowhere near. He was nowhere near as popular as Austin Jones. He and he didn't really have that many tours. He didn't really go on that many tours as Austin Jones. But I mean and his YouTube channel wasn't that big. He only had like like twenty thousand subscribers before it got terminated. Which twenty thousand is not a lot of not that much, but um I mean I had twenty five thousand before it got terminated, but I mean, though 20,000 isn't a big subscriber, um, what he did has been, I think his fans have forgotten about him. I just, what he did, that's pretty much like Lombardo. I don't know much about Mike Lombardo. So, um, yeah, he pretty much gets overshadowed by Austin Jones because Austin Jones was more, um, he was on YouTube for like 10 years and more people were familiar with him than, than Mike Lombardo. That's pretty much it. So, guys, thank you so much for my videos. Bye.